Today we are gonna smoke bomb our food. Welcome back to Comparison Cooking. My name is Kevin, and today we are doing an experiment where we are going to do heavy smoke. That's right, not the smoke we're used to. We're always striving for thin blue smoke, but today we're gonna flip the script and try to go for deep, heavy smoke. And we just want to engulf this chamber with the heaviest smoke we can come up with. Why would we do that? Well, for a few reasons. Reason number one, I released bad smoke video a year ago and it's gotten a ton of comments. And some of the comments I've gotten were, look, we're from another country and we use heavy smoke throughout our whole cook and our food turns out amazing. I could see that with certain woods, uh, very light woods, but the comment that struck me most was this one from a few weeks ago. And it said that they really laid on heavy smoke for an hour and then they would throw it in the oven. That really piqued my interest. So I wanted to give it a try today. I wanted to get as much heavy smoke on this protein, on this brisket as possible, and then throw it in the oven. They said that their food turned out amazing at this restaurant and that they always sold out. So I really wanted to give it a try. The other reason I wanted to do this was it was gonna rain all day. So I only had small windows where I could get out there, avoid the rain, get my smoke on, and then move it into the oven to where I didn't have to worry about getting rained on all day, the wind driving me crazy. This was like using a pellet smoker is what I was shooting for. I want to get some smoke on it, then move it into the oven. For the cook today, I didn't want to use a whole brisket, right? I didn't want to risk an entire brisket in case this was just a bad idea. So what I did was I trimmed up the entire brisket and then I took Harry So's idea of slicing it right down the middle so I could get the best of both worlds, the point and the flat. Now doing this, was definitely nerve wracking for a couple of reasons. I've never sliced a brisket down the middle like that before. Didn't know how that was gonna turn out. And then I did like it right from the start because we're experimenting with heavy smoke. This is stuff you're not supposed to do. You're supposed to go for thin blue smoke, your entire smoke. But the other reason I gave this a lot of thought is my Weber Smoky Mountain. When I smoke with that, I never get thin blue smoke. I follow Harry's method once again, great channel, check it out. I followed his method and I get that minion method just engulfs my smoker with smoke the entire cook. And by the time I get to thin blue smoke, I have to replenish my charcoal anyway. So I've known that there are some reasons that you can smoke with a heavier smoke, but with offset smokers, that's not the method we're taught. So let's give this experiment a try and see what happens. Since we are only going for an hour, I wanted to use a heavier wood. So I wanted to go with hickory to really lay on that heavier smoke, that deeper, richer flavor that you won't get as much kick in one hour from an apple or a cherry. That one, I could see myself doing that for two to three hours to add more of that smoke flavor. But if we're looking for heavy smoke, we just wanna put it on with a strong wood like hickory, and then we wanna cut it and move it into the oven. The other thing I did that I do wanna make note of is I did burn all the charcoal down first. I got the entire pit really hot. So any foul chemicals that might, have be, that might be lingering on there in the beginning could burn off and then I closed down my vents. I reduced my exhaust vent to about one third. And then my intake vent, I only had cracked this entire time for that hour because I wanted that smoldering smoke to really try to engulf this chamber to get a lot of smoke to see how that would result with our food. So I did that intentionally. And as you can see, we're gonna take it off, move it into the oven and then we're gonna get it to a traditional brisket where it's 203 or higher and super probe tender. Now, to enhance this, I also wanted to pull out some other tricks from my bag. So all the trimmings, 
I quickly made up some beef tallow. And when I went to wrap it, I made sure to cover the butcher's paper with beef tallow. I covered the brisket because it was sitting in the oven drying out. I wanted to make sure that I was adding back flavor where it made sense. Now, a couple things that happened that I wrote down in my journal to make sure the next time I go out, I might tweak and do a little bit different. Number one, going into the oven, butcher's paper, we're not really getting smoke flavor anymore. We're not getting that airflow over it. Maybe next time I would go tin foil. The other thing I did was I started it at 250 because I just wanted to go low and slow. Not that low and slow, but get it cooked. But I, I did have to crank it up to 275. So I'm thinking maybe next time, if I need to speed up my cook, I might go tin foil and crank the temperature up to 300 because from the 175 to 200, normally in my smoker, that takes about two hours. In the oven, it did take about four hours, four and a half hours to get there. So I really want to crank up my cook if I'm against a deadline. Uh, I didn't get this thing off until seven o'clock at night, so we'd miss dinner. Luckily, we'd planned for something else uh, for dinner, and this was just for the experiment. Now to the results of this food. First thing is, it was an amazing brisket. And part of the reason it was amazing brisket, I made sure every portion of the flat was probe tender. In the past, I've had okay briskets, because when I went to probe it, not every section of the brisket, the flat mainly, was probe tender. You had a couple spots, but then another couple spots were still a little tough. So I really like making sure that the entire flat is probe tender. I think that's one of the biggest tricks you really wanna put in your bag. The smoke flavor, now, I can see why this gentleman said we sold out all the time. There was a hint of smoke flavor. It was really good. It was definitely a top-notch brisket. I scored it about an 8 out of 10 compared to some of the other briskets I've had. Now, us backyard smokers, we're used to deep, rich flavors. Lots of smoke flavor. But I could see a restaurant selling out because most people don't have smoked meats a lot. So when they pick up that hint of smoke, they think it's very powerful. Now, I made sure to have my wife try it because she's not a huge fan of brisket. And she said it was her favorite brisket. So that goes along with the restaurant style that this gentleman was talking about. One hour of heavy smoke and then in the oven to finish it off. People think you're outside smoking all night, really working the pit because they're not used to really deep, heavy flavors in a lot of parts of the country. In Texas, that might be a different story, but here in Maryland, I know for a fact, you can't even find brisket on a lot of the menus because people just don't have an appetite for it. So tenderness was there, mild smoke flavor. I would compare it a lot to a pellet smoker as you really pick up a faint, hint of smoke and that's why people like pellet smokers is because they're not ready for a deep rich flavor of a traditional offset would i prefer to work my smoker all day nine times out of ten yes but for this method on a rainy day sneaking in between the rainstorms a heavy smoke and then moving it into your oven to make the rest of your day a lot easier it's a pretty interesting method I will have to say I'm very surprised. I didn't think it was going to work out as well as it did. Tender brisket, good smoke flavor, just that hint. Cause you gotta switch it up every once in a while. You can't have like, you know, really heavy smoke of a long smoke on your brisket every single time. Oh, or you can, or you can. But my biggest takeaways is, is this, if I didn't have a pellet smoker, this is a nice way to replicate it if you want more of a set it and forget it style of day, where you just go and you hit it hard and then you throw it in the oven and you finish it off. The other thing is I conserved a lot of fuel doing it this way. 
instead of going through a bag of charcoal, wood splits and all that, I used about four or five hickory chunks that I cut down from splits and I used uh, just over a chimney, chimney and a half of charcoal. So I really reduced my fuel consumption and then I was able to go on with my day not worried about having to deal with the smoker. So is this worth giving a try? I think so, especially if you have a hectic schedule on a weekend, but you really want barbecue, you know, the friends and family say, can you please cook up X, Y, Z? This is something for you to still get your errands done and all that. I would give it a try. I think it was pretty cool. I was shocked because some of the other comments were just, I don't know, like we smoke on this all the time. We do this method all the time, just heavy smoke. And you know, we read a lot of forums. We see a lot of Facebook posts. You're not supposed to go crazy with the heavy smoke. Well, if you use the right amount of it, it can work out in your favor. So if you are having trouble struggling with your fire in the beginning of a smoke and you're getting a lot of heavy smoke, this is something you can turn around and pivot. I do have a couple more notes that I think were key. This Harry So method of slicing the brisket in half was so beneficial in so many ways. Right amount of food for, cause typically it's just me and giving away to a couple neighbors. Now I don't have to track down like four or five neighbors I wanna give brisket to. Um, clean up. When you're handling a big brisket, your board is just normally coated with fat. Handling the brisket, moving it around on the board, slicing it, using this half of brisket made it so easy to handle the brisket, getting it around your board, slicing it, but it also made it really easy for cleanup. Normally my cleanup's like 30 minutes, getting everything that was out, because brisket is a process. But for this, I was done in like five to 10 minutes. I was shocked by how simple it was. My final thoughts on this is, can you do it? Yes, absolutely, we covered that. But hickory, mesquite, you might only wanna do that for an hour to two hours tops to develop more smoke flavor. Uh, with your cherry and apple wood, you might wanna go longer. And then you start getting into that realm of, well, why don't I just work the smoker all day? Uh, either way you can do it, but for hickory, I really did like that it wasn't overpowering. That's what I was really concerned about. Uh, so I will go hickory again. I'll probably try this with apple or cherry wood and then just throw it in my oven. Using your oven, you really should, especially if you have a lot going on. So part of this experiment, I was really happy with getting comfortable taking my barbecue to the oven to finish it off. So I was very, very happy for the viewer comment. I know uh, some other channels have been finishing off their briskets in the oven for years, and it is a very smart thing to do. So I do encourage that. If you've already been working the smoker for a long time and you wanna change it up, have more of a relaxing day, it's the way to do it. If you like this video, make sure to hit the thumbs up, subscribe, and all that other good stuff. And if you're new to the backyard barbecue game, make sure to check out the playlist, Biggest Backyard Beginner Mistakes, or the Barbecue Fundamentals. I wanna make sure you get from here to there in no time. As always, I hope you guys are having a great day, and I'll see you real soon.